Hey folks, I've been very busy lately, so I haven't been able to do too many videos or work on the models as much as I'd like to, but I decided to knock out the Acela revamp and just do a quick video on the updates. These included swapping out the originally installed Decoder Buddy Mini for a full-sized one, and improving the lighting, getting rid of the stock light pipes, and adding separately controlled ditch lights. You can see all that in action right here. There's no light bleed, which was originally a real problem on my first attempt at this when I replaced the original Bachman motherboard. And the alternating ditch lights really is a nice effect. And the arcing panograph light too. One of the reasons I went with soundtracks for this project. This is what it originally looked like after I redid the wiring the very first time. A TCS current keeper and an iPhone 4 speaker rounded out the soundtracks decoder install. Here you can see there were only two LEDs that went into this black box on the front of the chassis for lighting. Like I said, light bleed was a constant problem and it didn't really allow for much control. Before removing the Decoder Buddy Mini, I tagged each wire. I do this anytime I'm wiring, so I don't have to keep tracing back where wires go. Here you can see the remnants of the light pipe. I cut off the ends that go into the shell and glued the surface mount LEDs to the ends. And then I used my black puffy t-shirt paint to control the light bleed from behind the LEDs. The ditch lights were glued into the mounting holes and checked to make sure they were angled evenly towards the front. They also received the puffy paint treatment. Here is the lights all installed with the cab floor also in place to make sure everything fits. And here's the final look with the motherboard and speaker in place. All of the lighting goes into a separate board that connects to the motherboard to allow for easy separation when I take the shell off the chassis. I did my best to keep the wires bundled neatly. And here you can see the test where the shell is not mounted. This was just for checking the light bleed as before and I'm pretty satisfied with the result. I don't see any light coming out from under the shell. So that's it. I did not reinstall the current keeper and I'm not sure it really needs one. If it appears performance is degrading or something, I'll reinstall a uh, flatter model as the KA4 will no longer fit in the cavity at the rear with the decoder buddy uh, going on top of it. And while I'm on the subject of the Acela, I'd like to show you how I've been storing this train set since I no longer have the original box. This is a scrapbooking storage box from Hobby Lobby, I believe. 12 inches by 12 inches. It's the perfect size to fit up to eight car sets. Uh, and I use foam uh, for separating the cars. I am missing one final Acela business class car though, so there's an extra spot for the moment. On the lid, I have this note about the orientation and positions of the cars relative to each other on the prototype and where they sit. The roofs of the passenger cars have a long end and a short end, which helps denote the uh, orientation. I also keep a small baggie of the Acela-specific drawbar couplings uh, separately here. There's extra long and short couplers here, just in case something breaks. Here's an example of the foam that I'm using. This is the kind of foam curators and archivists would use at a museum. It's acid-free and shouldn't hurt the finish. I've lined the inside of the walls and the floor of the box with this foam and a piece gets put in between each car. This isn't a perfect storage solution for all the trains, but for trains that are a set like this, where they're bundled together, these boxes work really nicely. I even added a little label to the front. Well, that'll do it for today, folks. Please subscribe if you're interested in more. Take care, and I'll see you next time.